I myself was never Trumper. I was in the category of Bill Crystal and Brett Stevens. Thought Trump was just completely unacceptable. I think he's been a better president than I thought he'd be. It's been chaotic and a bit crazy. But with Trump, you always focus on what he does, not what he says. He's increased the military budget higher than it would be under any other president. That's overwhelmingly in Australia's interests. He's cut taxes. That's a very Republican thing to do. The, economy, the unemployment rate is 3.5% or something. Well, that's, that's very good. America is in a better place on that respect. I honestly think... You know, I, I apologise to Samantha in advance for saying this, and I, I'm, I'm sorry for it, but I honestly think the big discontinuity came between Bush and Obama. Obama himself was extremely reluctant to take any uh, military action. He announced his red lines in Syria and then pulled back from them. He was extremely reluctant to lead any campaign against the Chinese uh, acquisition of an area the equivalent of the Mediterranean in the South China Sea. The Defence Secretary, Ash Carter, would announce aggressive freedom of navigation operations and then they'd be cancelled by the White House over the top of the Pentagon's uh, wishes. Now, I really think... So, nobody could be less personally like each other than Obama and Trump, but I think... They're responding to a lot of, and expressing a lot of the same political realities. It's more Mind if I go back to this? I can't. Yeah, no, 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 no. I was going to come back to it anyway. Oh, yeah. I understand what you mean. Okay, but just the notion, I, I can do very briefly, that yeah. we can conflate US leadership in the world with invading places and sort of precipitating military confrontations. You know, I, I argued for the use of military force in Syria. Obama went in a different direction. Part of the reason he went in a different direction is guess how many countries stood with the United States in standing up on behalf of that red line? Exactly one, France. The United mm -hmm. Kingdom did briefly, and then David Cameron showing the foresight for which he's It should now be known. said, by the way, as an, <laughs> idealist, as an idealist that you are, that you annoyed the hell out of uh, Barack Obama yeah. in trying to push him to act against Assad. Yeah, I mean, not a lot of fun to be told by Barack Obama that you get on his nerves. Um, but <laughs> worse things have happened, for example, living in Syria, but uh, during mm -hmm. that crisis and that conflict. But, I mean, it is really, really dangerous to think that U.S. leadership in the world has to take the form of using military force and that because Trump and Obama are both presiding over governments that came after the disastrous invasion of Iraq and thus where there's major war fatigue within the country, that that means that Obama and Trump have so much in common. I mean, one leader believes in alliances. One leader pulled us out of the greatest economic uh, recession since the Great Depression. One leader believes in promoting our values in our leadership. One leader doesn't attack the press, doesn't attack his political opponents, doesn't debase the office in order to enrich himself. They actually really didn't have very much in common. They did have in common an exhausted America, an America that is exhausted from war. And even today, under President Trump, who's boasting about bringing troops home, he's increased our troop presence abroad. The U.S. military now has forces involved in some kind of counterterrorism operation in 40% of the countries in the world. And to think that that's the kind of leadership that's going to take us into a 21st century for these young people who are here in the audience, I just I reject the premise. So, what was your so, well, question? Well, <laughs>